I don't think, no. I honestly don't. I, I, I no. I, I think she, she's raising a point. That what if she said how many effing Christians do these people think there are in the United States? Would you find that offensive? No. No, I, 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 ju I just think she, she's making a What point. if she tweeted how many effing Muslims do these people think there are in the United States? You think that would be offensive? Not, not considering the whole context of Ann Coulter and where she's coming from. Well, wait a minute. Put her aside. Here's a woman who writes books for a living and as a, as an occasional appear, appears, occasionally appears on television radio. And she puts out a thing after the Republican debate accusing the candidates of pandering to Jewish voters. And she says, how many effing Jews do these people think there are in the United States? You don't find that uh, at all offensive? I, I'm repeating myself. Uh, in the whole context of uh, Ann Coulter and her comments over the years. Well, she also insulted evangelicals by attacking Huckabee, who was greatly supported by evangelicals. I just think she takes... All right, that's all. Ann Coulter's Jew problem, says Carol Brown. After the GOP debate on Wednesday night, Ann Coulter sent out the following tweets as left-leaning Israeli newspaper Haaretz noted. Ann Coulter, Cruz, Huckabee Radio all mentioned Israel in their response to what will America look like after your president. And Ann Coulter, how many effing Jews do these people think there are in the United States? And next one, Ann Coulter, maybe it's to suck up to the evangelicals. So she lost the Jewish uh, listenership and she lost the evangelicals. I mean... The truth is, I have no idea why she's still popular at all. She is acting out a role of a young, haughty girl when she's 50-some-odd years old. The hair gesture, the flipping, and the, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't care in your face. I'm in that business. And, okay, the truth is, I don't have a mane of hair to flip. I'm not Donald Trump. Okay, so put the hair aside. And uh, if I wore a kilt, I don't know. I don't think you'd look at the TV set as long as you look at uh, those on Fox News. That's a leg contest. You know that if you took away the, if you put a burqa on all of the women on Fox News, their ratings would plummet. I just thought about that. It, it's not a bad observation. I think that in order to judge whether they're being listened to, you know, women like to say, take me for my intelligence, not my looks. I think they should put their money where their mouth is, and I think that the girls on Fox News should wear a burqa for a week and see what happens to their race. <laughs> Robert's laughing. It's not a bad idea. If Martha Washington wore a full burqa covering everything, in, I'd leave the eye slits. They're allowed to look through the slits to, to read the teleprompter. And then you, all you could hear is their voice, and you wouldn't see their bodies or their faces. I would say their ratings drop by 95%. It's not a bad thought, actually. Savage suggests Fox News hosts wear burqa for a week to see if we should uh, if we should respect uh, the, the the female broadcasters for a, for their brains rather than their bodies. I think that would work. I think that would basically uh, set out the, the rating standards. You know, we in radio wear burqas. You don't see us. You don't know what we look like. It's all based on. Do you know what's see? Here's the unfair advantage that they have. But I like this because this is all based upon brains and the ability to express ideas quickly. Radio. Radio is all about what we say. It's not how we look. It's the most difficult medium in the world. We don't have anything else to use. Oh, we have sound bites and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you're not listening for the sound bites. You're listening for this, for the occasional joke, the occasional insight, the ability to put things in context, the mood, the emotion, etc. So I don't know what I want to talk about. I think this thing is over. Can we stop it already? Maybe a few more calls. I'll take four more, and then I'm switching. I'm going to switch to another topic altogether today. It's already enough. Is it not enough already with the debate? First of all, who could watch it for three hours? Man, I, I don't know. I could say some things now that I would say if I was doing stand-up, but I don't think they would play on a national level. It could be worse than uh, what Ann said. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Sorry to tell you, but uh, Ann Coulter's Jew problem just got worse. Iran's supreme hater, Khomeini, joins Coulter in lamenting GOP pandering to Israel. Just came out just now from the Times of Israel. 
Iran's supreme hater tweets that Israel is an imposed regime made through coercion which won't last. This is while Obama is rushing to give them nuclear weapons. In a reference to the Republican Party debate, Iran's supreme hater lamented that presidential candidates try to satisfy Zionists. Now, many of you right-wing Jew haters agree with him. I think you ought to go just join ISIS and be, be done with it. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei referred to Wednesday night's CNN-sponsored debate in a tweet on Thursday, part of a series of anti-Israel tweets. And I, I won't read it, but he agrees with uh, poor old Ann. He then went on to say uh, that people in the West Bank should arm themselves for a fight against Israel. Khamenei also called for the West Bank to be armed to be ready for defense. I'm sure that Kerry will send the weapons necessary for their self-defense. Catch up, Kerry. So there it is. The world's changing in front of your eyes. That's that simple. That, that's a big story. I mean, it's really sad to see an otherwise intelligent woman. People are making mistakes now. She's not the only one. She's making a, She made a big mistake, and I'm not going to make it worse for her. I have nothing for her or against her. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. But the thing is, I'm sorry when you attack Jews like that. What do you want me to say? You look like a thug like a female Irish drunk of the 1950s who would go out and beat up Yids. You know, tie one on, have 15 drinks, and go out on 8th Avenue, look for a Jew with a yarmulke to beat up. WFTL, Matt, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, uh, uh, Michael. I don't think that she was being anti-Semitic at all. I think she shouldn't have used the F word, but I think the point she was making was, was that Republican candidates who do not get a lot of Jewish support support Israel, and the, her point is that there aren't that many Jews in the country. Republicans don't get Jews, Jewish support, so that she was making... You, every, every, everything you say is correct, but why does she have to put the word effing in front of Jews unless that's her real feelings? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I kind of have to laugh when I think, of, hmm, sounds like a non-sequitur. He was asked whether or not he would be capable and it would be in good hands to be in charge of the nuclear weapons, and all of a sudden there's a sideways attack at me. I think that really goes to really the judgment. Do we want someone with that kind of character, that kind of careless language, to be negotiating with Putin? Do we want someone like that to be negotiating with Iran? I think really there's a sophomore quality that is entertaining about Mr. Trump, but I am worried. I'm very concerned about him having him in charge of the nuclear weapons because I think his response, his, his visceral response to attack people on their appearance, short, tall, fat, ugly, my goodness, that happened in junior high. Are we not way above that? Would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear Here, arsenal? The, Mr. Trump, I never attacked him on his look. And believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. <laughs> Rand Paul, 1.2%. Uh, Trump, 46%. Newsmax poll. Rand Paul is, you know, come on, please. He's toast. You know what's interesting, though, is that here we got them attacking each other because of the, the uh, uh, Judas inside CNN. The whole network is basically Rome, and the Judas was uh, Woodpecker there. And do you know the candidates on the other side, how old they are? Do you know that all of them are past the age of eligibility for Social Security? B Bernie Sanders would be 75 if the commie is elected. Hillary Clinton would be 69, and now they're digging up Jerry Brown. I don't know how they can even think of that. That's a laughing stock altogether. He would be 78 if elected. All of them would be past the age of eligibility for Social Security, and they like to make believe they're the party of the, of the millennial and the young. It's astounding to me. I don't know. You think millennials watched that garbage last night? I don't know what they do. Who cares? I'm not one of these who look back, oh, I want millennials to listen to me. I don't care what you do. I don't care who you listen to. This is terrible. Khomeini agrees with Coulter. Khomeini, Coulter, Coulter, Khomeini. This is bad. Maybe uh, they could offer her a position in the Iranian media. That might work. She become the, She could become sort of like Tokyo Rose. It'd be a big career there. I mean, if her career... You know what I'm saying? In order to survive, I told you, you have to adapt. And you got to go where the money is. Iran has plenty of money now. There's $150 billion. She could probably get herself a job in Iranian uh, television or the one that Al Gore sold, uh, whatever it was called, it's dying. 
What's that called, that, that media outlet that Gore made money on and then it went broke? Whatever, who remembers it? Hillary Clinton's favorite channel. I don't remember it. Khomeini joins Coulter in lamenting GOP pandering to Jews. But look, she also attacked evangelicals. That, that's the horrible part about it. The evangelicals love Israel. So that's an important v uh, voting block. And she said maybe it's to suck up to the evangelicals. So she got a twofer out of last night. I'm sorry, it's a big point, incidentally, for a number of reasons. One, because had she not used the effing word, I would agree with her, by the way. See, her point is well taken, but the anti-Semitism trumps her, her observation of pandering to Israel. I myself have attacked Israel on this show. I've criticized Israel over and over again for being too important in our decision-making. I said I support Israel. I said it over and over again surrounded by the throwbacks around them, they're our only choice at this point. But I don't know what's in it for us at this point. You know, you talk about pragmatics, realpolitik. Can anyone listening to this show tell me what Israel gives America? It's like a one-way street. Like, what did Cuba give the Soviet Union after all those years? Nothing. So eventually the Soviet Union disengaged from Cuba. They had to stand on their own. I'm sorry to say it. It's, it's a fact of reality. I heard the arguments going way back of why Israel, why we should support Israel, right or wrong. I've heard them over and over and over again, and they were all wrong, you know, which is that they're only ally in the Middle East. No, they're not. Jordan and, uh, and Egypt right now are fighting the war against ISIS. Israel hasn't li lifted a finger. That's number one. Then I used to hear, well, uh, they protect the Suez Canal and our oil supply. No, they don't. No, they don't. What does Israel do for us? So you could say, well, okay, uh, that's not the reason. But what is the reason? What is the reason? Oh, my dog is mad at me now. He's barking to interrupt the show. See, I do my show out of a studio in an unnamed... Okay, Teddy, you made your point. In an undisclosed location, and I have a dog that protects me, all 11 pounds of him. If anyone comes near the studio, he's right there, like a pit poodle. He's right on him. Good job, good job. You'll get extra extra greenies tonight for that, Ted. You did a great job. 855-400-7282 is the uh, phone number. We're going to move on, but let's finish up what we're talking about. Let's go to WMAL in Washington, D.C. Sam, please make your point. Go ahead, please. I just wanted to say that Ann Coulter's use of a curse word, I think, isn't aimed at Jews. It's aimed at everybody except Jews. I think that the voting populace is who that curse word was aimed at. I mean, and sir, I, uh, sir, wait a minute. Sir, the tweet said, how many effing Jews do these people think are in the United States? Who was that aimed at? Well, the word effing there refers to the, her, the number of Jews. Not, not like, it doesn't, it's not an adjective describing the noun Jews. Her incredulity about the, the number the, the fact that no one really knows how many Jews are in the United States. I mean, you do, I do, but she's aware that most people have no... Well, it's, about se it's about 7 million, by the way, uh, approximately the number of Jews killed by Hitler. I would... That's how many are in the U.S. By the way, that's the answer. Uh, and then she said maybe it's to suck up to the evangelicals. Why would she go after them? Well, because... Well, in a weird way, again, see, this is what she thinks about Anne is she makes very good points in terrible ways that what she's saying there is true. They're, they're pandering to the evangelical vote. The evangelicals like Israel because it's a landing... Sir, country. what do you mean by pandering to the evangelicals? What are they, an evil force in America? No, no, no. I think that... In fact, what I, I would say that Hillary Clinton pandering to the communists or Hillary Clinton pandering to the illegal uh, aliens would be pandering to an evil force. But what do you mean by pandering to the evangelicals? They're, they're approximately a big part of the backbone of America. Why would you say it in such a derogatory manner? No, no, no. I grew up in Oklahoma. I, I grew up with evangelicals, and I respect their viewpoint. I know what it well, is. That, that's what I'm saying. They're generally yeah. very moral very hard-working, very patriotic Americans. Why would anyone dispar disparage them? I, I think that Anne, where she's unclear, is we want to disparage those Republicans for giving the evangelicals a message that they don't believe in. The evangelicals support Israel because they, that's where the Messiah will return. 
what what we lose in in all that. Okay, but I've heard this from from communist Jews like Larry David did it as a comic.